Guys, before we talk about Group B, I need you to leave a like on the video and also check out the links in the description so you can find the socials for Albert Kim and his YouTube channel, Beeping Ballers. They do a lot of content covering the Korean national team and much more, so I don't want you to miss that. I'm recording the intro this way because it bugged out in the live recording. Enjoy the video. This is going to be a Group E focused video, but it's going to be the majority focused on Korea. Uh, of course, Albert, because we have you here and that's our favorite team. Um, how are we feeling, bro? 3-3 three, three draw with Malaysia? Just just get it off your chest. What do you need to say right now? Well, I mean, that was exciting. Um, <laughs> it was. Say, can't, <laughs> yeah. Can't accuse Klinsman of being a boring coach by any means, but, I mean, my oh, God, God, where to start? It just it just reinforced all the things that his haters have been saying about him for years. Um, full credit to Malaysia for coming out brave with a, with a very high press, but... I mean, just if you look at the first Malaysia goal where Hanging Bum is caught with his pants down uh, because he has no midfield support anywhere within like three, feet, four feet of him, it's just, it, it just seems like Klinsman's whole plan this tournament has been give the ball to Yigang Yin, Soto Min, and everyone else get the hell out of the way. Um, yep. And when teams start doubling those two guys or triple teaming them, then the well dries up and the other players unfortunately are not good enough to carry the load. And defensively, this team was already fragile. So you're seeing the results of, um, I think, this, how do I say, this misguided approach, I think, from Jurgen Klinsmann. And I did like his subs towards the end of the game. But, man, you should not be giving up three goals to Malaysia, no matter how well their team sets up. In total, we've given up, I think, now six goals in the group stage. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't been able to keep a clean sheet in a single game. Um. Dude, I honestly think if we played Japan in the round of 16, which we're not, that they would have put four, at least four past us, mm -hmm. maybe five. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's bad, man. I, I, I want to be angry and, like, curse and stuff, but it's just, like, all your worst nightmares coming true, I guess, in terms of how bad the, the team is defensively. And I, I, I mean, uh, it, yeah, I mean, you saw how pissed Hono Min was at the full-time whistle. That's pretty much encapsulates all our feelings right now yeah i just want to read this little fun fact here shout out to steve Hahn, probably you know top absolute elite journalist covering asian football he said this is the first time that korea have conceded more than five goals in the group stage of the asian cup since 1996 not a good record to have Th the biggest thing that i had written down for this game as a negative was this was the first time the malaysian attack looked competent and that shouldn't be happening against title favorites, South Korea. I don't know what you thought, but I thought Kim and Jay was kind of poor today. On the third goal, too, I thought he needs to do better on that. Not the best showing from him. And you already kind of brought it up, so we'll address the elephant in the room, the uh, the Japan fixture that's now been avoided in the round of 16. I've been seeing a lot of tweets going around that you guys might have thrown the game. What you think? You think it was in the boys' heads? We didn't. We we didn't throw the game. If you saw how porous the defense was, it's just incompetence <laughs> that led to this. We're just bad. Uh, but no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I agree. Um, Kim Min Jae was not very good today. Even though I saw a lot of people in my group chat defending him, I thought he was turned inside out a lot by the Malaysian uh, forwards. Uh, Choi Yun Hoo, the goalie, wasn't very good either. That first mm -hmm. um, Malaysian goal, I believe, should he he's he's scrambling a little too much. He doesn't have to come out all the way and leave his goal wide open. Um, and the third goal I know is a bit of a screenshot, but he still should be getting a bit more of a hand on that. Um, yeah, it. we're not a, we're not ducking Japan. If you know Son Ong Min, it's a nice narrative that we can make for ourselves. But if you saw the way that we defended throughout this tournament so far, it's not surprising to see Malaysia give up three. It's sad, but it's not surprising. And um, I mean... Uh, yeah, we're not we're not ducking Japan. I mean, if we did, then it, it would have been an ass whooping. So I mean, I don't think Klinsman is smart enough to go tell his players, "Hey, give up three and then duck Japan." It just it's the comical, yeah, it's the comedy of errors that led to this result today. Hey, look, I, so, sometimes I just need to ask the tough questions. I also agree with you. I don't think you guys were purposefully trying to not win today. Um, and I also think, <laughs> let's be real, if that is the narrative that's going to be peddled around, I mean, that's probably the most disrespectful thing that could be said about Malaysia, that like you guys were trying to not get a result and you still drew 3-3 three, three, uh, against the Malaysians. I feel like when I look at y'all, 
it's kind of what we said in our prediction way back the the reliance on the star power for korea like getting bailed out by mainly Lee gang in doing the bailing out here but you know sun with the penalty kick as well you guys look crazy unbalanced and i think it's very concerning and also dude how wild is it that we're about to start the round of 16 at the asian cup and the two biggest favorites japan and korea are having a goalkeeping crisis i would call it like this is wild it's crazy um with in respects to japan i think suzuki will be a good keeper in time he's just too young um but yeah, man. I mean, for Korea, like you said, unbalanced. Um, there's just no defensive s- structure starting from the top of the midfield to the um, to the full to the defenders in the back. Uh, and that free kick from Yi Gang Ying today, oh my god, world class, messy esque, whatever you want to call it. I I was with my lovely girlfriend watching that um, that that Yi Gang Ying goal, and when we and it went in. She and me and all her friends just stood up and started yelling. And these people next to us are casual football fans. It's like Klinsman has mm. to give half his game check today to Yigang In. At least half. Would you say so? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bro, I, I yeah. was going to say, you're watching Yigang In with your girl. That's a bold move. That's a bold move. <laughs> Cuff your chick, bro. After a free kick like that? Oh, my gosh. Dude, yeah, you're going to end up single. She said, she said she likes him more than Son Heung Min. But, <laughs> my God, dude. I Oh, God, dude. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Hey. He has been better it this has been, Cup. Can we agree? He has. And the scary thing is, if you go back to the Bahrain game, if not for Yi Gang Yin's brilliance, there's a good chance we draw that game too. Because it was tied going into this into like the 60-something minute, and then Yi Gang Yin comes and just scores two bangers. So yeah. it, it has been a lot of reliance on star players. Um, the one good thing you can say about Japan is, yes, they've been leaking goals, but they've still been getting contributions from up and down their lineup, I think. Um, we haven't um and it just goes back to the main issue of the team not having enough depth and being unbalanced and not having a good enough coach to help us overcome these flaws uh i'm not going to say it's over for us because it's been a crazy tournament but at this point i'll just be happy with a semi-final quarterfinal appearance yeah Yeah. Uh, dude i'm going to be honest i think your star power alone will always keep korean games if it would have been japan in the round of 16 it would have been a close affair like yeah, I would have. I unfortunately I had to say it. I do think Japan would would win. I I think they would have taken advantage of the Korean back line. But it's not like it would have been a five nil. Like you guys would be in the game if you play Australia. You're going to be in the game. Saudi Arabia, who might be your your opponent now, right? Um, we'll get into that a sec later. But uh, you don't you don't want to be playing like this. Given this is not this is a very good starting eleven. Like yeah. KJ Lee might be kind of booty, but like the rest of the team is, is this a good Korean squad? I've, I've seen people saying golden generation on Twitter all morning, Korean golden generation wasted Jurgen Klinsman. That's what I've seen. So you, I think you guys can get it done. Um, just gonna need to shore up that defense. I want to ask two kind of more investigative questions before we preview y'all's potential round of 16 and then get to the rest of the teams here. Number one, do we know what happened with Wang Bomb today? I know he went off. Is it looking bad? Um, he was, I mean, I think he was carrying a knock beforehand in the Jordan game, but no confirmation yet whether that was a tactical change or a sub based off his injury. Either way, the kid's not 100%. Um, even Egon Yin is not 100%. I think he had a bruised knee at some point in the group stage. Okay. Um, the entire team, half the team, even all the fullbacks are not healthy. Um, EBJ, who you mentioned, his booty cheeks is out right now with an issue. Um it's just it's just a whole mess up and down the lineup. So, yeah, if Hanging Bomb is hurt, we're screwed. But we'll see what the injury reports are like coming up here in the next few days. Who uh who started left back today? Uh, Seo Seo He okay. used to be the right back, but he got moved to the left side. He is, okay. as far as I know, not carrying anything. That's good. I think you, bro. If, if Hanging Bomb's out, uh oh. I'm going to say, uh oh, I think he's had quietly a pretty good Asian Cup. I think uh, he's getting left on an island a lot in the middle, but I think overall he's been pretty good. Um, and then I got to ask you about the Korean heartthrob, bro, Choke Sung. What's going on, bro? What's going on? Ass. Ass Why? cheeks. Um, Ta- is it tactics? Is it confidence form? Fill me I in. Think I, it, I mean, he's been playing well in Denmark. It, it, it must be tactics at this point. I think when you see with Clinton's system, He's just not getting enough service into the box. If Yi Gang Yin is not cutting in on his left foot and 
hitting him with those lemon drops and hitting him, you know, up aerially. The Choke Song is just not very useful with the ball at his feet. You know, he's he's just he's a tall, uh, statuesque target that you have to lob balls into. And unfortunately, the way this team is playing, they're just building. They're kind of pressing really crazy, like a I don't know, like a like a flick Bayern or like a or um like Liverpool, like Klopp's Liverpool, but they just don't have the technical ability outside of Igangi and to get balls into the box to give him enough service. And I think the lack of service um, has been playing on his confidence and then it just spiraled into him completely having only one shot on target the entire tournament, I think. Um, at this point, it looks like the best option is to play Son min as the lone striker in a false nine role because Cho Gyu-sung just has been a total black hole for us offensively. Mm-hmm. Just did nothing today. Um, missed a ton of chances against Jordan um, and just and when you when a striker loses confidence, man, they it's very rare for them to to gain it back in one of these tournaments. It takes about um, a few months with their club team to get that form back, and I just don't know if we can trust them uh, to start the next game. I'm gonna say saying that South Korea doesn't have the talent to get Chogae on the ball, I I think is it's got to be false, bro. Like y'all have the players. You tell me, Igang in wide and Iche Sung on the left is not enough talent. To get this man the ball? It must be coaching then, right? It must be. Maybe I'm corralling you <laughs> towards that answer. <laughs> I think, all right, hot take. I'm going to say this hot take. I think Cho Sung, I said it after the Jordan game. I I, th- I said he probably needs to be dropped because he looks very ineffective. And I think he's kind of uh, maybe curtailing Sun Kyung Min a little bit as well. But if you guys are going to play Japan, he needs to start because of how good he is in the air. And we've seen J- Japan concede five goals off crosses. Every goal they conceded this Asian Cup was off a cross. Big body getting to it. Ayman Hussein got to. Elkin Baggett had a little flick on Indonesia. If Vietnam are scoring set-piece goals against you, that that's a weakness. And I think Cho Sung could have had a little like redemption game possibly against Japan. Now, that's not going to happen, but I feel like that could have been where finally you guys play more of a style and a game plan that helps him look good, you know, as opposed to trying to get the ball to his feet, which he's he's not very good. Basically, what I'm taking away from this is that Kim Shin Wook is the exact same as Shogay Sung. You guys in the comments, let me know which player you've taken in your prime. What's the round of 16 looking like, Albert? Is it either the Saudis or the Thais? Yeah, it's the first place winner of Group F. The last game for the Saudis and the Ties are going to be against each other. Still wager Saudi Arabia to win that game or get a favorable result. So I think we're playing the Saudis. Okay. How do we feel about that? If you had asked me before the tournament, I would have said it would have been easy. But even now, I'm not sure we can get past the Saudis because um, if we're leaking three to the Malaysians, then I know Mancini is looking his chops right now. Um, Saudi Arabia got some game changers, bro, that are not going to – be able, easy to contain. Uh, they're number 10, Al Dasari, a good player. And there's another guy that's been, been right. lining up the tournament. Yeah. Um, I forgot his name. He came off the bench and just saved Saudi Arabia against uh, Kyrgyzstan. I have not. Oh, Garib. Kind of his name. Yes, that guy can ball. Garib. Um, yep. Imagine him running against this back line at this moment. Um, and I rate Mancini more as a manager than Jurgen. So, dude, I. We could be going home in the round of 16, and if he loses in the round of 16 to the Saudis, man, I mean, there's not really a good argument to keeping him for 2026. Oh, hell no. No, no, he's got to go. Absolutely, he's got to go. Um, If I'm going to give my little take on this, and I will do a full prediction for the knockouts when everything's said and done, so we don't need to go on and on about this, I still think you guys will beat Saudi Arabia. I think the fact that they looked so bang average against nine men, Kyrgyzstan, this team is not good. Do not get it twisted. They are not good. I think they have some individually brilliant players on on the team. I think, uh, is his first name Mohamed? Mohamed Kano? Kano? I think he's been their best player at the tournament so far. The younger Dasari, not Salem, but his brother. I forgot his first name as well. I think he's, he's performed well. But overall, I'm not impressed. And I don't think, maybe hot take, bro, I don't think Mancini cares about Saudi Arabia that much. And I, it, it's palpable. Like, I can tell through the screen that this job doesn't really mean a lot to him. So I think 
we'll have two kind of struggling Asian giants going at it. You guys beat them recently. I would take that. Um, I'm not saying they're going to be easier matchup than the ties, but I think either way, you guys should be winning that game. Let's go ahead and jump to very quickly some of the other teams. We'll talk about Malaysia because that's the team that you guys just uh, drew 3-3 today. What do you make of their campaign? You think it was a successful Asian Cup, calamity, somewhere in the middle? Let me hear it. Well, I can't say it was a calamity, but can't say it was successful since they got knocked out early. But um, good progress, I think, in terms of the way they've developed their program under Kim Pangun. Uh, lots of bravery, I think, going forward. Uh, and the fact that their best result was in the last game against the biggest team is is going to kind of end the campaign on a sweet note. Um, I like the system that they've set up, um, the way they attack as a team. And they're not ready yet, uh, but they'll, they'll, they're getting there. And um, I like the spirit in this Malaysian team. And I think Kim Pangolin is a, a very solid coach. So props to them. Not successful, not a disaster, somewhere in the middle. Would you keep Kim Pangolin if you were in Malaysia? Um... I think considering the fact that it's not exactly an attractive job, um, you're always going to have to hire one of those interesting, weird project managers to to live in those countries and you know stay there for a long term. Um, for now, I mean, I if I don't keep him as the coach, I would still keep him on in some capacity and in, in the technical side of of the federation. I think yeah, I mean, that might be the best option. Yeah. Mm, interesting and weird. Sounds like they need Carlos Quiroz. I'm with you though. I th- I think they 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 stick with their current manager. I'm very frustrated with Malaysia because the game today showed me their potential. And this that is the Malaysia I expected. I expect I didn't expect Malaysia to do much, but I expected goals. I expected high score lines. Instead, you got blown out by Jordan in the first game. But we'll get to them next. Are they on fraud watch? I'm not sure. Then you play the most Bore, completely change your style. Boring game against Bahrain that you lose at the last second. And then you kind of go back to your roots against Korea and you get a 3-3 draw. And and I look at it and I that Bahrain game is going to haunt them because they didn't really go for it at all. They played for a draw, which I don't know. Why are you playing for a draw when you got Korea last? It doesn't make any sense. If they had pressed Bahrain like they pressed you guys today, I think they could be looking at a third place right now. And the Jordan game, I think everybody had an eyebrow raised when we were like, Malaysia might be worse than India, you know, which is literally impossible. But that was the dialogue going on temporarily online. I think you look back at the game and it's like a, a worldie goes past them. I think it's Al Hamadi or, yeah, Al Marty. I think it's the first one, like outside the box, great goal. And then just a, ser- a, a, a series of unfortunate, stupid defensive errors from. Matthew Davies and the rest of the team, they just take turns like being frauds. But I think outside of that, like if, if that just hadn't happened, maybe we see Malaysia in, in third or maybe second right now. Very frustrating for me as a super casual Malaysian fan. Um, Faisal Halim, what do you think about his, his first goal? I think you touched on it briefly, the goal today against Korea. Individual brilliance or more so defensive errors from the Koreans? I mean, defensive errors, but I can credit for staying on the ball and uh, juking, you know, quality players in Kim Min-jae and Choi Yun-woo. Um, a little shifty guy, you know, up top. Um, shows you that even if um, the opposing team with better players makes mistakes, you still have to be able to capitalize on him. And I love this finish, a little dink into the far right corner. A um, mm-hmm. I, I, little spark plug type player, man. Always very useful. Still quite young, 26, very small, but... Uh, kind of the path that these Southeast Asian countries need to take going forward and the way they build these technical players that are a little smaller than their uh, East Asian counterparts, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a player that when I watched in the qualifiers, very dangerous for Malaysia. You knew he had one moment of magic in him at this tournament, and we didn't see it the first two games at all. I thought he was extremely muted. And then he pulled it out against you guys, unfortunately. But it was cool to see uh, Faisal get on the score sheet. Um and I thought their, their goalkeeper, I think his name's pronounced Sion. Sihan is maybe how you say it. I, I felt like he had a pretty good tournament overall. But any Malaysians mm. watching, let us know what you think about the campaign um, down below in the comments. Would you keep Kim Peng on as a coach or would you look somewhere else? Are you as annoyed as me about what could have been? Let's do the Jordanians next. I mean, Jesus Christ. These guys are the wildcard team, right, at this Asian Cup? Still? Like, they were the, they were the wild card coming in. Because they got good players, but the form was was shite. And then they get here. 
They look amazing against Korea, at least in the first half. I think in the second half, they got bullied. Destroy Malaysia and then lose to Bahrain? And don't even really press Bahrain? Like, what the hell is going on with this team? They were trying to... They were trying to duck Japan too. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Everybody was just trying to lose in the final match day. Oh my god! Again, it's the the Asian Cup is one of those tournaments where really there is no easy game. Um, and I think that no matter how well you play against one team, sometimes you just run into a bad matchup. And maybe Bahrain was just a bad matchup for Jordan. Um, I believe Jordan are still advancing as the third place team in they this will. group. So. They will. It's still a success in the fact that they didn't get eliminated, but Jordan, hands down, got to be one of the most frustrating teams after that performance they put on against us, and then to drop an absolute stinker against Bahrain, um, I I don't know. I don't know what to make of them. It, is is it more of a flash in the pan against us, mm-hmm. and is this result against Bahrain what they are what they are actually um, like in um, in terms of their real character and, and in terms of their real personality? Um, we'll see, but I think there are a few other better dark horse candidates than Jordan, but good for them to get even this far and making out of the mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure who their opponent is supposed to be, but uh, I'll try to confirm that after the video is made. What I think is very weird, and I need any Jordanians who happen to watch Deadball TV to let me know what's going on in the comments as they dropped out Tamari, their best player, for this final game against Bahrain, which makes no sense to me. At all. And when I was, so I had both games on at the same time. The Jordanian fans were cheering at full time. And the announcers were assuming it was because they are avoiding Japan. But I'm like, okay, we, we joke about Korea, like kind of drawing Malaysia. To, did, did Jordan actually throw the game? Because you left your best player on the bench, your fans are cheering in the, in the stadium. Like something's a little weird there. And I don't think Al Marty played this game either. Yeah, there's more smoke there than our section, I would say, for sure. Like, I, I don't know. I, again, I don't know who they're going to play, probably Qatar or something like that, But which is a better matchup than Japan, no doubt about that. But I, I have no idea how to grade this team, and I'm tired of pretending like I understand what's going on with Jordan. Let's end it with Bahrain. I mean, congratulations on finishing first in the group. Your reward is playing the tournament favorites. Um, They scumbag their way to those two wins. Um. Like you said, the game against Malaysia, probably one of the worst games in the entire tournament. And then today is just Jordan maybe tanking, maybe not tanking. So good for them. No, they don't have a chance. They're going to get pasted by Japan. They might score one. I think they'll, they'll score one against the Japanese and get one past Suzuki, but they ain't doing shit this tournament. I'm kind of seeing like a 2-0 Japan, something like that. 2-0 or 2-1. I still think maybe Bahrain get a few good chances, though. From what I've seen from Bahrain, so I I watched two full 90s, and then I did watch them today against Jordan. But again, it was like the the priority was the TV, which was Malaysia, Korea. So, But from what I've seen, I don't know if they can take advantage of the Japanese weaknesses. I don't think they have enough size and like a super strong, dominating center forward who's going to put pressure on guys like Koitakura or... I mean, if Shogo plays again, I'm done. But I don't think they have a guy who can take advantage of that. I mean, their best player has been, what's my guy's name? We got the assist game, Madan. Ali Madan. I, I don't, and Marhoon. You know, they're wingers. They're not bad wingers. They're, they're not bad wingers. But I would put them in sec, the second tier for sure. You know, maybe maybe it's like the eighth best, debatably 10th best like winger partnership at the Asian Cup. It's not great. It's it's not what the Jordanians have. It's not what, I mean, damn, it's probably, maybe I'm being disrespectful. It's probably on par with what Malaysia has. I'm just going to put that out there. You guys can go at me in the comments. I don't think they have the tactics in the team to take advantage of, of Japan. And I think Japan are, are done screwing around. Like they, they won 3-1 against Indonesia. If you watch the game, I mean, they they murder them. It really could have been and should have been six or seven, and then they give up a stupid goal at the end, which I don't want to make excuses for. It's embarrassing. But I just, I don't know. Bahrain, I, I need to watch their goal against Jordan today, but unless they're scoring off set pieces, I don't think they're going to beat Japan because that seems to be the way to, uh, <laughs> the, way to the Japanese heart. Um, anything else you want to say to wrap up, you know, the group? Before we end the video? Um, yeah, well, not a great day for Korea, but I think on the bright side, it's been a crazy tournament. So I think the knockouts are honestly going to be even crazier. 
Um, but we'll see what happens after the final group uh, group stage matches. There's still a few going on right now. Uh, but I will say, even if we don't win this tournament, which I really wanted, at least it was entertaining. So um, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, yeah, looking like so far, honestly, if it's not the Japanese, Iran looks good to take it too. They look like the most solid team top of the mm-hmm. front in terms of their stability. Uh, but we'll see how the rest of the knockouts play out. And I can't wait. Albert, I appreciate you jumping on. I know it's like midnight over there. Um, Wishing you guys the best. I do think that Korea, I I think you guys got it in you. I think you'll make a run. We'll see. I've been wrong before. Uh, (laughs) You guys like to remind me about that all the time in the comments. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. Hit subscribe again. Check out Albert Kim's uh, socials and BB Ballers. I'll put all of it in the description of this video. We appreciate you guys for watching. And we'll see you all in the next one.